Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to help you present your work, first to a publisher and second to a live audience. Are you ready? So in the first half of this video, I'll be showing you how to present your work as if you're emailing it to a publisher. We'll be looking at formatting, we'll be looking at font size, we'll be looking at things like that. In the second half of the video, I will talk about how to read your work out loud to a group or to an audience. Okay, this is a short story I've been working on. I'm presenting it as though I'm going to send it out to a publisher or to a magazine. Or short story and novel manuscripts should be formatted in a style similar to this. It doesn't have to be exact, different competitions will have different submission guidelines, but it should at least look similar to this. Um, when you submit your work, please ensure you are obeying the publisher or magazine or competition runner's submission guidelines or else your work won't even be looked at. In this tutorial, I am going to be looking at novels and short stories and I'll briefly be showing you a script format for a TV screen and a really useful resource for looking at other formats as well. So back to this uh, one on screen now. To start with, this is a short story and the font size should be between 11 and 14 and the font itself should be clear and easy to read. I'm using Trebucket MS. You can also use Arial Narrow, Calibri Body or Times New Roman, they're the three main ones. Uh, many publishers on their website will explain exactly what font and what font size to use. If they do so, please obey their rules. That's absolutely vital, I can't stress that enough. Um, I like having page numbers to my document here. So it's page 5 out of 10, or page X out of Y, depending on how long your document is. Um, to insert page numbers, click the Insert tab up here. Go across to page numbers and click page number here and it'll give you an option to add your page numbers in. I also like having a header in my document. So I've got uh, my name on here, Jack Dowd. On the right I've got Detention, which is the name of this short story. And I've got V5, which is version 5. When I submit this I will delete V5 as the publishers don't need to know that. And if necessary I will delete my name as some uh, publishers like having their work giving in anonymously so it doesn't influence the judges. Um, a final point I want to touch on is how to double space your work. Lots of people struggle with this, but when you know how, it's incredibly simple. I'm editing this on my MacBook Air, so I press Command and A on my document. If you're using a PC, it might be Control A. So press Command or Control A, it highlights all your text. Then press Command or Control 1 to single space your document and when you open a new word document it should automatically be like this and to double space it press control and two and it will be double spaced and everything I've said so far is for short stories and for novels if you are writing a different medium I thoroughly recommend the BBC Writers Room website it is an absolute gold mine honestly it's amazing for writers They've got lots of interesting features on here. I am going to briefly show you the script library as I think that's the main feature we're here for today. So you click on the script library and this is an online library of all the TV shows and everything that's broadcast on BBC. It will have all their scripts on here. So for example, Doctor Who is here. Doctor Who is one of their flagship programs. We'll click on that. We'll click on download script here. And in less than one second, I've got a script for a Doctor episode. And this script would have been given to the actors by um, the writer, who in this case is Sarah Dollard. And this episode is called Thin Ice. It's with uh, Peter Capaldi, so it's a fairly recent one. You can scroll through, see how it's set out, and enjoy, really. And the BBC has this for TV shows. They have it for radio plays, for films, for theatre and for other cross-platform mediums. So for the slight continuity change from earlier in the video, I'm calling this on a different day. And now I'm going to show you how to read your work out loud. 
and that's something I've always personally struggled with. I am a massive introvert and public speaking or public participation even is like absolute nightmare for me. So first thing to do is sit up straight, such as I am. Bear in mind my head is slightly dropped off by the camera. Let's fix that. There we go. Um, have something to read from. So I've got some papers here from Empty Nights. I think this is draft seven now. This is an old draft, but it will do for the purposes of this. Always make sure you're reading from something, whether it be a computer screen or papers. Otherwise, you'll stand there like, um, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it just looks very unprofessional. Speak clearly. I have a problem speaking too fast myself. So I try and slow down. So try and speak, I think, at 80% speed. And yeah, okay, here we go. This is an old draft of my novel. So if you do buy Empty Nights when it comes out, you'll find a passage very similar to this in the novel. Okay, are we ready? Are you sitting comfortably? This is my normal school day. I wake up to sound at four minutes past seven train to Cannon Street, rushing by my window. Wilfred will then proceed to jump all over me and tuck at the covers until I'm out of bed. Mum will be watching TV and complaining about the news. Dad will be getting ready for work. After I've drained a gallon of tea and gotten dressed into my suit, I get on an L14 bus to sixth form. My tutor is Mr Sandil. He's nice, but he's too busy shouting at the naughty kids and working his way through the morning announcements to actually help us with anything. These announcements normally consist of how our sports teams are doing, a latest topic in the news like a war or memorial of some sort, and then a pop quiz, because how else do you want to start your day? Joe and Adam have been in my tutor group since year 7. Joe is a coder. He keeps saying that when he leaves school he's going to create codes for computer games as a job. His hair See? I got it wrong there. Carry on. His hair curls back in ringlets at his neck and ends just above his shoulders. He gets a lot of shit for it, and I don't know why he doesn't get it cut. It doesn't help that he's a head shorter than everyone else in our year group. Adam is one of the smartest boys in sixth form. He's also a prefect. Twice a term, he has to go to a meeting with the other prefects, the senior teachers and heads of department to explain what we, the students, think is wrong with the school, and what can be done to fix it. Nothing we suggest is ever done, and the teachers give us things no one else asked for, like extra books in the school library, or benches in the school field. On Thursdays, I start my day with double history, my least favourite subject. My teacher is Miss Barton, who is also head of sixth form. She is empty of all emotion apart from wrath and fury. We are studying the history of Germany before World War I. We literally read from the textbook and then practice writing essay answers. Adam is in this class, so on the rare occasions we do group work, I partner up with him. I think everyone hates the class equally, but we try not to show it. We don't like Miss Spartan for a variety of reasons. My reason is that the first time she taught us, she said that teaching hormonal teenagers was a challenge, but she would try her best to educate us. Okay, and that's a very short extract of my novel. I hope you enjoyed. Notice that even I stumbled along a little bit there, and that's fine. As long as you speak clearly, if you do make a mistake, pause and move on slightly. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been very interesting editing and filming and putting it together. And I will see you for the next time. Take care.